Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Dunik from Event Driven Utopia. Today we are going to talk about the Event Driven Change Data Capture Systems. We will start by looking at the motivation behind a typical Change Data Capture Systems or CDC system for short. Then define the CDC practice and discuss various methods you can use to implement it. We will explore the expectations of a production grade CDC system and discuss the potential architecture and finally explore some CDC tools you can find in the market. First, let's look at the motivation behind having a real-time change data capture system. Most of the time, applications start with a minimal data footprint in their architecture. If you consider a simple web application, initially a single relational database can fulfill its data needs. For example, a relational database like MySQL or Postgres is more than enough to handle CRUD operations of the application. CRUD in the sense create, read and update and delete operations. But when your application evolves and gets more tractions in the market, you need to have data systems that support different data formats and data access patterns. For example, you are going to need a cache to speed up your reads. Also, you are going to need a search index to perform full text search across your application. Also, you are going to need a data warehouse in place for rich analytics. Practically speaking, there is no single database can satisfy all these needs simultaneously. We know that reading from a cache is faster than querying a relational database. Also, a search index like Elasticsearch is far more better at doing full text search compared to a relational database. Likewise, applications have to use different data storage technologies in their architecture to provide a better use experience. That forces us to keep our data in multiple places in redundant and denormalized manner. When we have multiple data systems in place, we need to classify the data that is going to store in them. So there are two major categories we can identify. Uh, first, systems of records data and derived data. When you have more than one version of the same data set, you need to appoint an authoritative version or source of truth for that. That means when there is a discrepancy across versions, the source of truth will be accepted as the correct one. This version is often called systems of records data or source data. The very first time a user creates data, it is captured into systems of records. For example, when a customer creates an order, it is first recorded in the orders database. Other systems can take source data, apply transformations and store with all representations to have different purposes. This data is often called derived data, which is often redundant and in denormalized form. If you lose derived data, you can recreate it from the source. Source data and derived data sh systems should not kept in silos. They have to be synchronized to make the application state consistent. If we go back to our original example, a change made in the database has to be reflected in the search index, the cache and ultimately in the data warehouse. So there should be a way of capturing the changes done to the source data system and propagating them to the derived data systems in a reliable and scalable manner. So this is where the practice of change data capture comes into play. Change data capture or CDC for short. CDC is the process of observing all data changes written to a database and extracting them in a form in which they can be replicated to derived data systems. 
If the definition doesn't make sense to you, please refer to the figure in the right hand side. Think of CDC as a machinery that continuously watches the source data system for changes, extract them out and propagate to downstream systems. That's the simplest way to understand what a CDC system does. But we know that there was this practice of ETL long before CDC was introduced. ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. ETL systems extracted change data from source databases, did some transformations in the middle and loaded them into target systems. Why not ETL then? Well, ETL and CDC share a common set of principles, but there are some major drawbacks in ETL. First, ETL was too slow. ETL jobs usually run at night or on hourly basis. Hence, the de hence they deliver delayed results. Another thing is that they, they are made of many moving parts. So it is complex to set up and maintain them for the long run. When it comes to the financials, ETL licenses are not generally cheap. Below are some well-known ETL tools in the market. But CDC surpasses ETL by being real-time. It is the biggest selling point of CDC over ETL. CDC is capable of delivering source systems changes to downstream systems as they happen, enabling the enterprises to provide real-time experience to its customers. What's the process of change data capture? Well, it starts from detecting changes in source systems. There are three ways to do that. First, we can insert a special column called last updated to all tables in the source database. Then keep polling this column for any changes. But this is not real time and it imposes a severe load on the database. Secondly, we can use database triggers to get updates in real time. But again, triggers can impact the database performance. Finally, we can also watch the transaction log of the database for any write operations. This is by far the most practical way of detecting changes in the source database. Once the changes are detected, they need to be captured and stored in a durable manner. Then the changes are delivered to any interested derived data systems in real time. That's the CDC process in nutshell. Let's explore how a transaction log based CDC system works. In this diagram, client 1 makes a change in the source database by setting X to A. Then client 2 makes another change by setting X to B. The transaction log of the database acts as an audit log in this case and rec records these two operations according to the order in which they happen. The change detector module in the CDC system detects changes in these transaction log and propagates the changes to downstream applications. Finally, downstream application replay the changes to the order in which they occur. If you look at the value of x at the target system, it is equal to b. A moment ago, we learned how does the CDC system work. Now it's time to take things to the next level. Can we build a production ready CDC system? Well, it is possible, but we need to think about few concerns before we design such a system. First, the changes must be delivered in the order in which they occur. Otherwise, there can be inconsistent states in downstream systems. Then the system should support a PubSub style change propagation. That way, downstream systems can be added or removed at any time without impacting the overall system. When it comes to the delivery of messages, 
delivery guarantees are a must. So the CDC system must support for at least once and exactly once message delivery guarantees. If a downstream system misses a change event, it can make the whole system state inconsistent. Finally, there should be a support for lightweight message transformation. Because data formats expected by downstream systems can be different. For sure, those requirements are difficult to achieve, but they are necessary. What if we borrow certain characteristics from the event driven architecture? Event driven architecture has already been proven for building asynchronous, loosely coupled, and massively scalable systems. We can mix and match certain features of event-driven systems to build an event-driven CDC system like this. Well, we can make a CDC system event-driven by introducing an event bus in the middle. The whole thing centers around events here. Soon after a change is detected by the log mining component, it is published as an event to the event bus. When the event bus will take care of propagating the event into interested parties. Before delivering events, change events can be transformed as well. Making this architecture event driven resolves many challenges. Let's have a look at them as we progress more on our discussion. Let me break down the above architecture as follows. Change event generation, event ingestion, and change event propagation. Let's have a look at event generation first. In this stage, the transaction log mining component detects the changes made to the source database by observing the transaction log. Changes are then formatted as events and then published to the event bus for delivery. Typically, CDC tools have log mining components built for each database vendor. Unlike CD ETL systems, changes are detected and delivered in real time as they happen. Each change event is timestamped and contains only a single change. If there are two operations made to the database, there will be two corresponding change events. In the right, you can see a sample event from Maxwell which is a popular CDC tool in the market. Second, the change event ingestion. When change events coming in, there has to be a medium to receive them and store them in a scalable and durable manner. This is done by the event bus. Generally, a message broker or event stream platform like Apache Kafka or AWS Kinesis is used as the event bus. But messaging and streaming systems serve different purposes. You should choose the best option that fits well with your solution. For more information on messaging versus streaming differences, please refer to my other video where you can find the link in the description. Event bugs in the middle solves many hard problems in the event driven distributed system, such as highly scalable event ingestion, cold torrent event storage and event ordering guarantee. Also it provides at least once or exactly once delivery guarantee. Usually change events are organized into topics in the event bus where they are mapped into unique table in the source database. Third, the change event propagation. In the meantime, Downstream systems can subscribe to the event bus in PubSub manner to receive change events. They can choose which topic they want to subscribe to. Usually, a CDC system provides pre-built consumers to event bus. These consumers read events from topics, apply some transformations in the middle and deliver them to target systems in real time. Alright, now let's talk about some advantages of 
event driven cdc technology the biggest selling point here is the ability to detect capture and propagate changes as they happen that is why cdc is way ahead of traditional dtl tools then the loosely coupled nature enables you to add or remove downstream components to the architecture without impacting the whole system the event bus in the middle provides reliable delivery for change events also it can buffer incoming events if the rate of event production is higher than the consumption that will be beneficial for slow consumers unlike polling or trigger based methods the event driven approach doesn't impose a heavy load on the source database CDC is becoming a hot trend for many use cases that need real-time data synchronization. Here are a few examples. Cache invalidation can be done by replaying the captured change events into a cache like Redis or Memcached. Similar to that, we can use change events to build a full-text search index like Elasticsearch. Also, we can use cdc to do various database migrations uh, can, uh, such as version upgrades uh, migrate to different database vendor or on prem prem to cloud data synchronization another big use case is to move transactional data to an analytical database in real time for this we can use cdc with stream processing in conjunction Finally, CDC is becoming the de facto standard for synchronization data across microservices, especially when the CQRS pattern is used. Before we wrap up, let's look at some CDC tools in the market. When deciding on a tool, you should consider your budget, your team's skill set to maintain that in the long run and how it integrates with your source and derived data systems. Here, I'll discuss two popular open source tools in the market. Debian. Debian is the most popular CDC tool in the market right now. It is an open source project initiated by Red Hat. The architecture of Debian centers around Kafka to be used as the event bus. It allows you to pull change streams from databases like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, and send that to Kafka. Then we have Maxwell. Maxwell reads MySQL bin logs and writes raw updates as JSON to Kafka, Kinesis, or another streaming platform. Maxwell has low operational overhead, requiring nothing but MySQL and a place to rent. Okay, let's try to wrap things up. Your application architecture has to use multiple data storage systems to cater to different data formats and access patterns. To synchronize source data across these systems, CDC can be used. Being event-driven adds more benefits to a production-grade CDC system. Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you with another video soon. Thank you.